<laughs> Hi, Andy. Um, my name's Peter uh, Griffith, and I've had kind of a parallel course uh, to yours in terms of uh, working with a subject for a long time and hitting that sort of 2005, 2006 uh, um, the notoriety of the film and all of those kinds of things. Um, but I'm worried that you're not worried. Uh, because I'm worried, as a scientist, when I go to, uh, to uh, Interior Alaska in January, which I did uh, this year, um, and I have my Arctic parka that I have to take off all my bottom layers and just kind of wear it loose because, uh, you know, the air temperature, as soon as a, the wind blows from a low spot, um, it drops to, you know, to minus 10, so you have to be able to zip up. But then when the wind stops blowing, all of a sudden it's 28 degrees, it's 34 degrees. That's scary. Right. So I'm, I'm worried that you're not worried because although intellectually I get the kind of reward that you do from dealing with one of the crisis, uh, um, you know, the existential crisis of our time, so I can go to work and not be worried because I'm doing exciting work. Um, but I have to maintain a sort of intellectual le le level of worry uh, without that, if you maintain the emotional level of worry, then, then you, you'll just crawl into the bed or something like that. So, yeah. so tell me why I shouldn't be worried that you're not worried. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, but, but where's your there for? <laughs> Is, um, no, seriously, in, in that sense, what would you want me to do differently? Um, I think I'm telling the story that says that this is such a big and profound change in the planetary system that it's largely beyond our control with what we know about ourselves now. Not so much what we know about the planet. It's not about learning more about sea ice or what's happening with permafrost. I'm convinced that that's not going to be the transformational thing. What could help um, propel more change is to work on the, the least predictable element in, in this whole matrix, which is the human element. And what I've tried to focus on in recent years is moving away from numbers, despite demands by some to pick a number, uh, 350 or whatever, 2 degrees, 80 by 2050. Um, I have yet to see a trajectory, a a, a I see lots of wishful graphs that say, oh, we, we can do this now with what we know. Uh, and I see lots of wishful people like Bill Gates, who I interviewed last week on, you know, for, uh, I mean, we posted his, the video interview. You know, he has this wishful, magical, uh, energy miracle approach, um, both of which are inadequately capturing the, the, the nature of the problem. Um, but what I, what I think I can do with the remaining time on the planet that I have it, I moved away from thinking about numbers like two degrees, 350. You know, here we are in a world where we, we're past 400 and not going back for centuries, at least, unless some big geoengineering sucking, CO2 sucking technology comes out. Um, so how does the 350 story get told in a world when we know that number is not coming back? Um, that's fine, you know, as, as a movement building effort, that's fine. But my, wh what I've done is I moved away from numbers to looking around, what are the capacities in society or in individuals that if I work or others work on boosting those capacities or those traits, I know we have a better chance of having innovative spirit, not just in laboratories to make some great breakthrough on a fusion reactor, but also um, as Harish Hande, this uh, energy entrepreneur in India, has made a breakthrough with a financial model for how to go into a village and bring in enough solar power so that they can run their sewing machines and get less poor and have a better trajectory. I want to tell that story just as much as I want to tell Bill, Bill Gates' story. That's why I included a link to, to a, a conversation I did with Harish Hande a, few, a couple of years ago in my package on Bill Gates. Uh, and So it's like when you know you don't know how to get these, to these numbers on a world heading toward 9 billion people with growing energy appetites, but you do know, looking around, what are the things that there's like eight or nine capacities or traits I know I could work on that can boost the possibilities of get us moving trajectories in the right way. And I did a series of posts and even tweets on this over the last couple of years. 
and they're, you know, they're, they're, the, the shorthand is, and here's the story, uh, because it almost rhymes, it's almost like a song, bend, stretch, reach, teach, reveal, reflect, rejoice, repeat. I, I did a series of tweets in 2013, and, and bend is basically resilience, uh, so think about resilient design, think about resilience in your own life. I, I show you examples. Billy Parrish was a hallway protester in 2005 at the climate talks, and now he's a, a solar innovator in in uh, Silicon Valley. You know, he tried one thing; it didn't kind of work. He tried another thing. Uh, that's just Ben. Stretch is uh, innovative capacity. Reach is uh, connecting people. Like there's this YouTube phenomenon in India. Uh, a nonprofit went in there. Think you got 100 million farming families in India. You got a changing climate. People don't have enough food even now. What do you do? You know, and you've got some extension agents. How do you get the word around? Well, you, you want to maximize communication. So they built a YouTube channel where a farmer in a, in a local language puts up a video saying, hey, you know, I tried the seed this way and planted a little bit differently, and it's boosted my production. And that, that gets seen by other farmers. And so they become more uh, resilient, um, more productive. You know, that excites me. It, it excites me profoundly in a world where if I stay focused on numbers, for the next 30 years of my life, it's not going to change. I don't think I think it has less chance of changing. Numbers matter, you know. I, I've I've written many times about the, the the value of the IPCC process, for example. But it's not the thing that's going to change stuff. Where when you can focus on capacities, the capacity to communicate, the capacity to get out of the bubble on the internet, you know, the, uh, just to know that there's a r bigger world out there, to to, to listen to, to conservative talk radio w once in a while, uh, to to understand um, the richness in that town in Woodward, Oklahoma, um, that it's not just the other. To, um, you know, all those things. There's, so there's tons to do, and, and it's like, and I can't remember if I mentioned this in the piece, but I've mentioned it periodically. This whole process of dealing with climate change to me is, a lot, is similar to dealing with having a kid in the sense that we all instinctively want to control the life around our child and make that child safe. And you know, from the top down, and uh, you know, protect them from bullies, and and make sure they don't fall down, and and and, and all that stuff. Or, and this is what I've failed at mostly. I'm sure many other parents feel the same way. You, you look at this kid, and you say, what can I, what, how can I build the capacities in this child to be more resilient, more flexible, more communicative, more empathetic, empathic, um, so that I can let go. I can let go. And and with climate change, I feel there's that same need to let go. To, and that's the comfort level. It's not like, I don't, I mean, worry. To me, worry is the word worry. I, I thought about, the, this came up too in my process. I thought a lot about the word worry. What does it mean to me? Worry is like a divergence between what's happening and what I think should be happening. Or, or what, so, and when you realize, again, as I said with the serenity prayer, you know, there's big aspects of this that are not within our control. Um, that, you know, we all, so we, it's kind of like with raising a kid, you, there's a there's seductiveness in that top-down model that was the approach to the climate process, the climate treaty process for 20 something years. But then you realize, and Paris is letting go. That's what so that's why I wrote about. I said Paris is like I did that piece that ran in the print paper Sunday the Sunday after Paris. It's like it's a great success in terms of it's the first time that this process has art has reflected that that a top-down approach isn't going to work. Uh, that you have to have a trust building process uh, with everyone uh, reporting their best efforts, and that's kind of the human way. And, and it's the first time that the treaty process reflected that. Um, and so I said, the, to me, what made me excited uh, was um, there, for 20 years, uh, there was this like, it was a process in search of an outcome, which magically would be wonderful, but now we have an outcome that's a process. Uh, and I think somewhere in it, that was a headline for me. So we've created a journey, and it's a 100-year-plus journey. And that was the first time that there's been like a 100-year time frame in the treaty process as well. And I think that it's w really valuable to have that all out there. So, you know, part of this is semantics. I, you know, I could say, sure, I worry. You know, when I read these new papers on the, the David Archer notion of, you know, this is a very long thaw. Whatever you're seeing out there is the Arctic that, that our successors grow up with will fro be profoundly different than the Arctic that I read about in my dad's books, um, which was this frozen place where all these stupid British or other explorers went and died because they didn't put on the indigenous clothing. And, and um, 
you know, the shifting baselines of perception thing gets in the way. You know, and I could just go, you know, screw this. It's, it's too bad. We can't do anything. But I, so I, I attack it the way I think is best, which is focus on capacity building and uh, build that collaborative empathic culture that might actually someday look at us as a, a global village, you know, was sort of this silly idea in the 60s. Um, um, but we, are, we really are that. And you're not going to really address the global commons tra tragedy in this issue until there's some sense of, of that, too.